so many people are making thousands of dollars on YouTube in story-based niches, many others are still struggling. But if you take a closer look, you'll realize it's not just about storytelling. It's about the art of crafting a video. There are a few crucial elements behind a successful video, but one thing that can act like a rocket ship on your YouTube journey is editing. What if I told you that you could create high quality content using a tool that most people overlook just because it's so simple to use? Well, uh, what I'm about to show you might change how you see things, because if you understand the basics of editing, nothing can stop you. Now let's make our documentary style video using CapCut. Just take a quick look at some channels like Magnate's Media, and you'll notice something. Every creator has their own style. At first glance, it might seem like they're using pro tools like After Effects or even Blender to create those videos. But if you check their older content, many of those videos still got millions of views, and most of them could have been made using simpler apps. Let me put this in a poetic way. Every creator has their own rhythm, like a song you hear and instantly recognize as your favorite artist's work. There are certain elements in that music, a combination of notes, a specific chord that make it theirs, a signature that belongs only to them. And if someone else tries to copy it, it just doesn't feel authentic. If you think about it, you'll realize that finding your rhythm is something many creators and editors struggle with. But how can everyone develop their own unique style when it's supposed to be like a fingerprint? Isn't that hard? Yes, it is. And it may take time. But here's the good news. I'm going to show you some elements and techniques that will help you visualize your style and combine it with your ideas. Nothing complicated, simple, yet very effective. So first, let's talk about lighting. Any kind of it. What do I mean by lighting or lights? And how can we use them in our videos? Imagine you have a dramatic scene you wanna show in your documentary, a static image that you uploaded into CapCut. You give it a zoom in effect or even pan it by keyframing the position, which makes it more dynamic and visually interesting, but something still feels off. Sure, you can add elements like raindrop overlays or even thunder effects, but there's something that can elevate your storytelling even more light. That's why most creators, including me, like to add light overlays for scenes like this. By simply changing the blend mode to screen or overlay, you can add a subtle glimmer of light that makes the scene feel alive. Or maybe you want a smooth transition between cuts without interrupting the flow. What if we use light leaks, those bright glowing flashes, and time the cut when the entire light covers the screen? It's a trick creators like Isaac use all the time. And here's another cool idea. Say you have an element in your scene, like a sword, and you want it to shine. This is where light rays come in. While I've already talked about light sweep in another video, you can keep experimenting with lights. You can even fake a light source. For example, import a yellow or white background onto your timeline, place it on top of your scene, mask it so it only covers a corner, then feather it to make it soft. You can even tweak the blend mode so it naturally merges with your scene. These are all simple yet powerful tricks in CapCut that can instantly make your video more eye-catching and cinematic. But what else? Wouldn't a light overlay help you create a unique editing style? How can you truly be creative? We're stepping into a part of this tutorial that I've personally developed for beginner editors. Techniques that can give you the most dynamic, story-driven scenes for narrative or story-based niches. But before we dive deeper into the tutorial, what if I tell you from now on, you can turn your idea into a business with just a few clicks? How? Let me introduce you to Hostinger Horizons. Imagine having an idea for a profitable website, or maybe you want to create a landing page for your business, and all you have to do is give a couple of prompts or even choose from pre-made ones to get ready to use templates that you can edit however you want. It turns your idea into a website without writing a single line of code. And it's not just that. You can find many services within Hostinger Horizon. After creating your website, you can connect it to a domain, purchase hosting, and link it to an email system. It takes literally 15 minutes to build a full website and start selling your idea or product right away. Wanna try this cool tool? Well, I've got a surprise. Use my code DaVinci to get 10% discount on your first month. Oh, and um, did I mention they've got a 30-day money-back guarantee? 
I've dropped the link in the comment section, so go ahead and bring your idea to life right now. Now, it's very simple. We use the three layer rule, which gives your scene depth. And because you can animate each element separately, it becomes much more dynamic. For each scene, we need a ground, a sky, and another element like a figure. We can keep adding more elements to these layers to enhance the depth and storytelling. Then we can replace the static sky with a real sky clip and add overlay elements like fire sparks, light, or in my case, maybe castles. Finally, with some color grading and final touches, you get a scene like this without even animating any element. Let's try again. As for this scene, we need a background as our base layer, two portraits as middle layers, and a desk as the third layer. We also add a fire overlay to bring more dynamism to the scene. Let's start by adding the background to the timeline. Then, I'll bring in the first portrait. I like to reverse the layer order first. That's just my personal workflow. Scale it up slightly and place it where you want on the screen. Next, add the second portrait and position both images however you like. Now, select the portrait of the woman and head over to the Adjust settings. We're going to tweak the lighting and convert the image to black and white. Lower the saturation and adjust the exposure, contrast, and highlights to your liking. Once you're happy with the look, apply this preset to all the layers. But we don't want the background to be affected by these changes. So select the background layer, go back to adjust, and simply hit the reset button. Now for the man's portrait, it's a bit brighter with more whites. Select it, go to adjust, lower the white slightly, and increase the shadows a bit. That balances it out nicely. Now let's bring our desk into the timeline and scale it up until it covers the bottom of the screen. I want to animate these elements to add some movement. So with the desk layer selected, go to the beginning of the clip and create keyframes for both scale and position. Then move to around the seven second mark, scale the desk up and adjust the position so it looks like it's growing and moving out of the frame, just like that. Now open the keyframe animation panel, select both scale keyframes, and from the curve presets, choose cubic in. We're going to use the same cubic in preset for the position keyframes as well. As you can see, the desk is growing smoothly. Now let's animate the woman layer. Go to the beginning of the clip. I want to create a manual fade in effect. You can always use the built in animations, but I'm doing it manually here to show you how it works. Go to the blend section and set the opacity to 0%. Then at around the two second mark, bring the opacity back to 100%. Next, let's add some movement. Still at the beginning of the clip, create a position keyframe and move the woman downward slightly. Then at around the seven second mark, move her back up to her original position and set another keyframe. Now open the keyframe animation panel, select both position keyframes and choose the quad in preset from the curve options. then close the animation panel. Now, just where the woman's layer has keyframes, I'm going to add markers so I know exactly where to place the keyframes for the man layer as well. Next, select the man layer and apply the same fade in effect. Set the opacity to 0% at the beginning, then bring it back to 100% around the two second mark. Once that's done, let's add movement. At the beginning of the clip, Create position and scale keyframes for the man. Move them slightly down and scale them down a bit. 
Then, at the seven second mark, just like we did with the woman, move him back to his original position and scale him up slightly. Now it's time to ease those keyframes. Open the keyframe animation panel and select both scale keyframes. From the curve presets, choose quad in. Do the same for the position keyframes to keep the motion consistent and smooth. Okay, we already did the hard part. Now let's add our fire overlay into the timeline. Change its blend mode to screen. As you can see, it already makes a huge difference. Everything is moving separately, which is exactly what we wanted. But let's take it a step further. Select all the layers, right click and choose Make Compound Clip. I want to animate the entire scene as well. So at the beginning of the clip, I'll add scale and position keyframes. Then around the seven second mark, I'll zoom in, scale it up, and position the portraits in the center of the screen, just like this. Now for the final touch. I'll add an adjustment layer. Extend it to cover the entire compound clip above it. Then go into Adjust Settings. We'll tweak the lighting a bit, but the main reason we're doing this is to adjust the color wheel. For this scene, I'm going to give it a warm yellow tone. Adjust the tint, shadows, and mid-tones toward yellow, and play with the saturation until you find the look you're going for. After you're done adjusting your color wheel tones, let's go back to basics. At the bottom of the menu, slightly increase the vignette, then adjust the particles, clarity, and sharpen settings. And that's our final scene. Now imagine creating an entire video with the same structure. Simple, yet incredibly professional. You can easily produce high quality pro looking edits using CapCut or other beginner friendly apps that people love to watch. Plus, I've added all the assets I used in this video and a link in the description so you can download them and recreate the scene as you follow along.